I never set out to compete in four different sports at the Paralympic level. I just have a problem when I start something new. I set the bar unrealistically high and try and see if I can achieve it. So I'm a 14-time Paralympic medals in the Winter Games, and that's where I'm the most decorated Olympic or Paralympic athlete for Team USA. But there are incredible athletes that are um, past me, and I definitely... Come on, this is this is about you. Come on. <laughs> no, no, no. Nothing short of incredible. Uh, the other attribute, which is uh, fascinating uh, to me as a lifelong athlete and someone who uh, this show um, chases greatness and people who have persevered um, and maximized human performance, for example, to do that across four sports is equally shocking. So I'm interested in, I, I, I think obviously the rest of your story going back to your birth in the Ukraine and being adopted, uh, we got a lot of ground to cover, but <laughs> how, how does one achieve that level of greatness, of success, to be able to compete at the highest level across four different disciplines? What are some of the ingredients that you feel like were or have been present for you, your life, your community? How, how does one do that? That sounds impossible, frankly. <laughs> yeah, it definitely. Well, I never set out to compete in four different sports at the Paralympic level. I just have a problem when I start something new. I set the bar unrealistically high and try and see if I can achieve it and see how close I get to it. And I've been pretty lucky that I've had an incredible team around me from my mom and my fiance and our team from all the different sports. And just, it all started with my rowing coach in Louisville, Kentucky, Bobby Hurley, who really believed in me for the first time. And then I also had coaches and people who didn't believe I would make it to that elite international team USA, Paralympic level athlete. And that kind of motivated me to prove them wrong, to say, to kind of show that there's no perfect body type for one to do a sport because I am smaller in my physique and I don't look like a jacked athlete. I get that and I've accepted it now. But I want to show that for that like those people that um, are in the same boat and are like considered the underdogs that are maybe overlooked and want to prove. You can use those things that maybe society or the coach or somebody thinks that is going to not going to be a, like a limiting factor for you to get to where you want to go like well you've got another secret weapon because only you and your body can possess that you can bring to the table in that sport and I had that support from my coach from Little Rowing Club there and my mom was so persistent in me trying sports and also the other thing too I don't it, it was just I think it's all a mixture of of my background, of where I came from, how I grew up, and what was my normal. And I didn't realize these were attributes that an athlete needs and what makes them like being resilient, being determined, and just um, when you get knocked back down, just to keep going and fighting for that next day. And that the four sports happened because I never let there was doors that were getting shut in my face so i loved rowing it was my favorite sport i started when i was 13 finally made it in 2012 to the paralympic level competing in it but then in 2013 i ended up injuring my back and that door closed forever for me i had no idea other sports in the paralympics existed so i'm like oh my gosh what else am i going to do now and the opportunities of cross-country skiing biathlon came up and other sports and instead of saying no I took that leap of faith just to try it and see because at that time I was so determined to make it back to rowing and not believe that that path was over for me. But then just, I think it was just not being afraid of walking through that unknown door and never knowing where it's going to lead and no idea led me to do four sports. This, this is a theme, uh, through the book, right? This willingness to try. And right now there are so many people who, who are listening right now or watching and 
there are these things in their lives that they are telling themselves, if I could just, you know, fill in the blank. Mm -hmm. And while they may be attached to the outcome, I think psychology, sports psychology, human psychology says that even beginning the effort, even just starting to try, unlocks so many things. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering where do you, you know, attribute this, um, if you're, if you're exceptional at one thing, we, you've already highlighted this and this idea, this willingness to try, um, you highlighted in that, this last little 90 second, um, bit that you just shared with us that, you know, when one door closes and what other people think, there are a handful of different points that you made. I'm wondering, is there any one thing that you feel like gives you permission or that you give yourself permission to try? Is there something that underpins that? Is this just in you? Is this in everyone? What's some advice that you would share? Because right now there's someone listening who's not doing the thing that they desperately want to be doing in this world. I think honestly, it's in everyone. Everyone has the ability to, to just, to try that thing. And the thing that really, like, that separates that sometimes some people don't take that step is their mind, their mind, they're feeding into those thoughts of the bad thoughts of like, well, this is going to work out. And like, for me, it was, I mean, your mind is, it can be your best asset. And sometimes it is my weakest downfall too, as an athlete, but it's how you're, there's a lot of power in words and how you uh, approach something. So in my mind, I've learned to learn this. And if you're like, if you just say, okay, you know, right now, I don't want to accept this door is closed. It might be cracked open, but this one is wide open. Maybe like, like my, so like my strengths coach said to you, like, sh like think of the best case scenario, think of the worst case scenario. You're probably going to land somewhere halfway in the middle. And that's kind of how I've tried to approach that too, because it's going to, and then you can work from there, but just not letting your mind and your thoughts and feeding into the negative side of the what ifs. And I also hate to live life by what if, because what if you never walk through that? And then you, then you start to wonder that way. And, um, and that's kind of what happened to me in sports. I'm like, well, I don't want to live my life knowing what if I never moved out to Florida, left home, everything I knew to try and pursue the sport. What if I became, what if I become to where I am now? And, or what if I didn't and stayed where I was comfortable and didn't know? Like, I can't imagine that. But also, not to get on a tangent, but... No, I'm, we're here for the tangents. I also am one of those people, I've learned, and I think it's because for the first seven years of my life, I've lived in very uncomfortable situations and have learned and been forced to adapt on the fly. And... And being someone with a disability, you're f always worried and focused about like, how do you adapt to your environment? How do you adapt to thrive in society? Because it's not created for you. It's not created for my body, for someone with no legs above the knees. And that constantly being in that state where I'm always having to adapt, where I'm always have sometimes like in Ukraine, having my back against the wall and need to fight for things it became a very familiar place for me. And so instead of living in all those, and what a lot of people may consider as really sad and depressing and challenging, I learned to use that as, I've been here before. I know exactly what to do from here and use that as a tool to, and that, and that helped me from going from sport to sport. When I go from having a great season, I go from having a successful being successful at one sport and then starting completely over and just being the underdog again. And I love something in that moment where you're starting all over. Nothing's been decided. And you learn more about yourself that you're adding to like that tool bag, you're adding to your traits that you're then going to apply to. In my mind, I, I hope to think I'm doing that. But then of course I'm always like, oh my God, today's awful. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for being, uh, somewhat accessible to the to us mere mortals 